Mantee, South Carolina. Not that long ago, all of the land in this area was devoted to growing cotton. Some of it still is, but some of it has been converted to golf courses. With that has grown a mini golf mecca right at exit 98 of Interstate 95, where so many millions of cars pass every single year. The smart ones stop and take part in this special area of Southern hospitality and Southern golf. We hope you like it on this episode of The Traveling Golfer. This lager comes from a place that's been brewing beer for longer than anyone else in America, where men and women have crafted amber gold in the caves below since before refrigeration. It comes from Yingling, America's oldest brewery, and brings with it all the know-how that doing the thing well for nearly 200 years affords. Yingling, traditional lager. Respect, it's earned. What a beautiful framework for golf. Our first stop on the trip to Santee, South Carolina, Santee Cooper Country Club, a member club, but also allows outside play. You'd be awfully lucky to stop here. The start of every day in Santee is great, but how could you ever get a better start to a day or your round than this first hole at Santee Cooper Country Club? Sun shining beautifully in the Santee area. Todd Miller, general manager of Santee Cooper Resort. And I guess that encompasses a few entities. It does, that includes several of our properties. Uh, the Santee Cooper Country Club, which we're standing on right now, uh, Lake Marion Golf Course, and our villas at Lake Marion as well. It's been an amazing story, the growth of the Santee area. And there's a lot of factors that helped but it all comes back to the golf courses. And this Santee Cooper Country Club is a prime example. George Cobb Design, an architect who has quite a history throughout America. And he opened up this golf course in 1967. It was the first one in the area. This is where it all began. Correct. Well, that's appropriate then. And uh, I know George had a lot of characteristics that he'd like to use. I see in this particular course, it starts right away, something that was more common in the 60s than today with housing developments, all the things, mm -hmm. routing. It is incredible. You go literally from green to tea all the way around. And uh, incorporated the dog legs. We have four of them that bend to the left, four of them that bend to the right. So we have to, all the variety of shots need to be played out here. You're right, I've seen George Cobb use dog legs extensively on a number of the courses that he's done. Part of that goes back to strategic design. He wants you to not only hit the fairway, but hit the right side of the fairway for the angle end of the green. The green complexes are also emblematic of that time period. Most of them are pushed up in the air, very well guarded by high flash bunkers. Uh, so it is uh, it really a second shot golf course. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, most of our visitors need to, don't remember taking the fact that we're at sea level. So also the ball does not carry. So that is definitely our number one recommendation. First thing is take an extra full extra club on that second shot in. The putting surfaces themselves, once you get there, a nice undulation to them. So. Yeah. Putting becomes an interesting part of the game too. It absolutely does. And being Bermuda grass, they do have grain, so you have to take that into effect a little bit. Our second recommendation is play about half of the amount of break that you that you see, because they tend to go a little bit straighter than you think. The holes are well framed by trees, but with a wide enough carter, I think, all the way through, uh, the trees are not overwhelming. And every once in a while, you do have to stop and admire some of these big live oaks. And of course, the superintendent staff does a pretty good job of maintaining because 
You can't just cut grass, you have to also maintain the trees on courses. Second stop, Lake Marion Golf Course, right next door to Santee Cooper Country Club. The player-friendly course in the Santee area. After Santee Cooper, our company decided that we needed another offering in the area. So in 1979, they asked Eddie Riccoboni to design another golf course, and that's where we came up with Lake Marion Golf Course. A golf course architect who really is pretty much just known in the South Carolina area. I've heard comments from some of the people staying here already that that's the fun course of the area. I would agree with that. We designed it with the fact that we knew that people wanted something a little more user friendly. So the fairways are a little wider, the greens are a little bit larger. Not to be easy, just to be more fair. So bad shots still are bad shots and you get punished, but the good shots you get rewarded. So there's lots of different variations of holes and lengths of holes, so uh, birdies can be found there. Yeah, after driving a long stretch on I-95, you don't need to be beat up, so that's yeah, exactly. a good idea. And generous as it is, still strategy comes into play. Oh, absolutely. There's spots where you absolutely know that you cannot go, uh, so you have to avoid those, whether it be the, some of the tree-lined fairways or single trees located in some tricky spots uh, and also a good many of the uh, I think we have 42 bunkers around the course protecting the greens and some of the fairways as well so it's not a easy course but it does good shots will be rewarded. Lake Marion not a killer course as far as length either. No we have four sets of tees so you can pick the set of tee that you're most comfortable with uh, from the back it would be uh, roughly 6,700 yards up to 4,800 yards from the most forward set of tee. Santee Cooper has the most elevation change in the area. Lake Marion a little bit less, but still a gentle roll. They both have some uphill, downhill uh, to get into, but not enough there where it hurts on club selection or anything to that effect. That's what I think makes an enjoyable golf course when there is enough roll to make a little bit of change but never going to be boring, and that's the case in Santee. Combining superior technology and a material advantage, the Exotics EX10 Hybrid raises the bar on performance. The EX10 features a new Japanese high-density steel cup face. HT980 high tensile strength steel can be engineered extremely thin, producing a hotter launch all over the face. Incorporating variable face thickness provides consistent, powerful performance, even on off-center contact. The cup face is combo brazed to the 450 SS Hypersteel body for an exceptionally precise bond. This exact process helps deliver Exotic's legendary distance and forgiveness. Engineers made substantial advancements to the slipstream sole by making the channels between the rails shallower while compacting the overall sole to ensure minimal turf interaction. The result is improved stability and club head speed throughout impact, regardless of the lie condition. 24 grams of heavy rear sole weighting produces a deeper center of gravity, making it easier to get the ball airborne from any lie. The pronounced cutaway heel and toe channels improve airflow throughout the swing. And with the material removed from these two areas, the slipstream sole is able to glide cleanly through the turf. The Exotics EX10 features two premium high-performance stock shaft options with the UST Mamiya recoil and Graphite Design Tour AD50. Exotics EX10, a material advantage. A third of our courses in the Santee area is also the youngest. Santee National opened in 1990, one week before Hurricane Hugo. What a welcome. But it's made a pretty good comeback, huh? Charlie Clark. Charlie is the one behind Santee National, the newest golf course in the Santee area. Yes, it is. Well, the youngest, I should say, 1990. We've started the course and we moved a lot of dirt. We had to put in miles of irrigation. We were so proud of it. We were ready to open. 
and a week before we opened, Hurricane Hugo hit, and we literally had over a thousand trees either broken in half by tornadoes, 90 mile an hour wind, which blew over the whole tree. That's an amazing story. You obviously bounced back from it. It certainly has built a reputation since then and bringing golfers in from all over the place. This is your baby, right? Right. Golf Santee, the first of the packaging companies that brought golfers into the Santee area. And that was your idea after you opened Santee National. Yes, shortly afterwards. We had to have an entity it couldn't be just Santee National because we needed multiple courses in order to be able to put the package together and let people have variety. And so that's when we started going to Canada. We went to Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, places that we, we, it was cold there when it was still warm here. And so we had a triangle from the 95 and the 26 and the 77. It reached a huge number of people and could drive here in short order. Why don't you give us the official welcome? First we say come on down and then we say glad to have you. Audio the Marketing, Lakeview Productions, marketing, PR, promotion of the entire Santee area. He's a native of Santee. Oh no. <laughs> Canada. Obviously, it's working. You're bringing a lot of people here. And the strength of it, of course, is the golf courses, including this one, Santee National. A pretty interesting layout. It is, for sure. And it's one of those three courses in town that if you're coming to Santee, you're definitely going to play. Porter Gibson, golf course architect from North Carolina. They imported him, laid this out, and laid out a fun track. They did. They did. The front nine is a lot of fun to get started with because it's a lot more forgiving than the back. The number one hole gets you out of the gate really well. Uh, it's a nice long par four with water down the left-hand side right near the green. So uh, you want to hit it out there as far as you can so you have the shortest possible club in and make sure you stay to the right because left is no good. Fairways are generously wide, tree-lined, nice undulating greens. Uh, but you need to really hit good shots to score. Back nine's totally different. 10 is, is another one of my favorite. It's a par five. Length isn't all that important off the tee because there's water in front on a par five and unless you're a really big hitter, you're gonna have to lay up anyways. That is going from down in the valley before the water up to an elevated green. Much tighter, many more dog legs, still have some nice big greens and nice white sand bunkers but uh, it's a much tighter back nine than it is front. Yeah, we can see some of the interesting designs of the bunkers right here. Uh, he's got some rolled sod tops and, and some challenging shots up to the green, so I'm sure that's a little bit a part of the challenge. Every club in the bag's required here. You always want the big finish. Big finish, it's a dramatic par five. Uh, coming up to the clubhouse over water off the tee, uh, a little bit of a dog leg as you're coming uphill on your last shot. Well, we've talked about golf way too much in this show. Why don't we play a little golf together? Well, here we are, Canada versus Philadelphia in Santee. Hit away, Tony. I give up. There's no way I can compete with that. The little town of Santee has gone through an amazing development over the years from a time when as far as the eye could see, it was all cotton fields and now it is a bustling hub of recreation, golf and hospitality. The man in charge Mayor Donnie Hilliard, welcome to The Traveling Golfer. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's great to be in your town. When you come off Interstate 95, 
you know right away it's no longer a farming community because it's just a huge stop for restaurants, hotels, shops, everything that a traveler would be looking for. We cater to the travelers, but at the same time, we still want to encourage folks that there's an outdoors type environment, but golf is our mainstay. You're situated halfway between New York and Miami. That's good geography. We never measured it, but we promote the fact that we're halfway. When you stay in Santee, you're gonna to wanna to eat in Santee, the spot for Southern Fried Chicken. Yes. Barbecue? Barbecue. I think I got struck by the fact that there is in Santee a blend of the modern and certainly the traditional. Yes, because we still have what I call natives. Fundamentals of who we are is going to stay with us. Clark's Inn and Restaurant, Santee, South Carolina, a family affair since 1946. Bill Clark, the owner, and now he's got two sons involved, Winfield running the back of the house, Edward running the front of the house. When my father came here after World War II, his, his father and he had bought some property in Santee as an investment, he had cooked some. And then when my father got out of the service, he thought he would run this restaurant temporarily. That's how it started. A filling station that had a, a bus stop attached to it. And eventually it evolved into like a small kind of country restaurant. And it evolved into a hotel and inn. Some great recipes here from the good old South. We, we still use a lot of the recipes that were actually my grandmother's recipes. The fried chicken recipe has never changed. A lot of our desserts, the pecan pie, the apple crisp. My grandmother on my mother's side, my mother herself, personally perfected every item and it taught me the majority of what I know about running the kitchen. One of the coolest things is that we've been around so long that we get some of the children now of who were brought here from their parents years ago, 30, 40 years ago, and things like that. So we're seeing not only are we the third generation, some of the people that eat here are kind of the third generation. This is a beautiful building, remodeled, modernized, but you never lost the historic tradition. It happens to be what my wife and I like. An upscale feeling without making people feel uncomfortable. Then we kept getting feedback. People liked it, so we tried hard to maintain that. I hope that tradition never goes away. I feel like I've known this place for years. <laughs> After a long, hard day on the course, Buddy of the Barking found a lot of fuel at a lively place called Pedro's in the middle of a very lively restaurant scene in Santee. Mexican cuisine like you will find in Mexico. At the other end of the spectrum, you have some fine dining too. Yes, we have a couple of really good fine dining spots. Clark's Inn, Wilbur's is the new kid on the block. Also fine dining, known already for the pork chops. A great southern pork chop, that is especially. And a place that's at the total other end of the spectrum. You might not expect to find it in Santee, South Carolina. Yes, we have some Thai cuisine here that is as good as you're gonna find anywhere in the world. And we also can go down under, and by that I mean underwater. Captain's Quarters is a seafood specialty place. And they have a nice cozy bar too to wet your whistle before you get the night started. One of the best things about Santee is the convenience. Not just the golf, but everything else. Pretty much. Uh, once you get here, you're no more than a three wood from pharmacy. You want groceries. If you're staying in a condo, you may want to go to the IGA. Gas stations, if you're fishing, we have supply stores all over the place. The great thing is, everything's within a mile. Certainly will put a great nightcap to the end of the day. And I might need somebody to share this with me, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with Todd Miller. General Manager of Santee Cooper Resort. We've teased the viewers with tales of the golf courses, the amenities, the great things to do in Santee. I think it's now time we let them know how they can get here. We want to make that as simple as possible. 
We like to say one call does it all at our packaging office, Santee Cooper Golf, and we can book you in any type of lodging you want. We have any of the area motels in town. We have villas on the golf courses. We have villas on the water, and we make all the tee times for you as well. The villas are a fun way. If you've got a group of players, whether it's couples or a bunch of guys who want to come in and play a little bit of golf, they can stay together, they can eat together, they can play cards. People wanted to stay on site and not have to drive too far to the golf courses, uh, so we can put you right on one of the golf courses. There you go. Check out everything Santee Cooper Golf has. Best way to do that, the website. www.SanteeCooperGolf.com The final leg of our visit to Santee, South Carolina. Like everybody else, back on Interstate 95. From Maine to Florida, millions of cars pass by this exit every single year. The smart ones stop, whether it's just to refresh or to play the great golf in the area. Hey, where are you all going? What's the big hurry? Stop in here, they've got great golf. Convenient places to stay, fun restaurants. Well, as I say, the smart ones stop here. The traveling golfer did. Hopefully, you will too. Until then, we'll see you somewhere else along the golf trail. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer.